Quick, a, quick one, a quick one as well. Just this, um, this is from Emily, Sh em Emily mm -hmm. Shannon. Hi, Lenny. I'm a huge fan and currently a second year film student in UCC. Just curious if there's anything you would do different at my age of 19 to help you get to where you are now. Oh, I can so totally, talk to your 19 year old self. I can tell. Stop. OK. In my case, just take a big, deep breath and just stop worrying about it so much. You know, I think I gave up lots of my productive energies to um, anxiety and to the belief that if I didn't do it really soon, it was going to be too late. And so I can tell you from the vantage point of being well up more than twice your age that you have, a, you have an awful lot of time and just, you know, don't measure what you're doing against some kind of what you regard as a, as a scale of success or achievement. Um, don't compare yourself to other people's biographies when you read them and just think about the things that interest you and pursue the, the expression that is most satisfying to you. And then you'll end up going where you should. I think that would, I wish I'd known that at the time. And a, a not dissimilar question indeed, just there might be a slight variation within it from Rian Omani and who wonders what mistakes are you glad you made? Ah, yes, that's a good that's, one. That's a good one. If um, any, if, 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 if any. I mean, I think, you, you know, the glib answer is that you, it's the only way you learn, but it is sort of true as well. So everything that I didn't do as well as I could have, I hope, taught me something. Um, I think in one sense, I was, I was very late to make my first feature. Well, by my, by my judgments, I was late to make my first feature. Mm. So I, I went off to California to do more philosophy and then I Ooh. gave that up and I came back. I didn't finish the PhD, came back um, and I started, um, I started writing and I got quite down and it was probably about four or five years where I was very unproductive and it could have gone wrong. And I started doing commercials, which was, which I, I really needed to do in a funny sort of way to get over myself. I had such a kind of elevated view of what was worthwhile that unless I was going to make you know a Tarkovsky film mm. and I should mm. just never make anything which is also a way of letting yourself off the hook I mean right. you know high standards unrealistically high standards are sort of the wrong kinds of high standards can be just a way of saying well you know I just take this too seriously to actually do anything you know which is, um but um you know doing commercials was just like okay then just well let's see if you can do anything even you know and actually I did those for quite a while and there were probably a, a few points where at the time, I thought I've waited too long. I could have made something five, seven, ten years ago. Um, you know, a proper thing, not just the things that I was making. But actually, in a way, I'm glad now because I don't think I would have been um, as it wouldn't have been as good. And I, um, I think that was just my pace, you know. And I, that was not by design. And I, and I felt. Probably if I was a stronger person, I would have made something. And, 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 and we've got loads of questions here, which are really going to come to guys, actually. So I, and first of all, I'll just say hello, uh, Martin Bridgman, who sends hello to you, actually. Oh, no way. Uh, so I say, yes, of course, Martin. And, Martin. Oh, God, how nice. Yes. Oh, he's here. And uh, I, I just want to ask you something about, about women filmmakers. Um, yeah. A species of whom we, we, we knew very little, hardly knew they existed, actually, until very, very recently. But they have come and see. Have they changed the shape or the colour of, 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 of film? And, and yeah. in what way? And, and a little bit further, I wonder if there's anybody who you would actually recommend. Yeah. Is, there is a woman that should be watched. Oh, yeah. So, like, I, let me start with that. I would say there are a huge number of really interesting women making films at the moment. So my favourites... Um, Deborah Granick is an amazing filmmaker. She made a film called Leave No Trace a mm. while ago, which I thought was a masterpiece. Mm. And again, it didn't get the attention it deserved mm. um, outside critics. Um, Kelly Reichardt, who's just made a film called First Cow, which you will be able to see. It may even be streaming already. Mm. Um, it's, she's superb. Um, I, Lynn Ramsey's film, um, You Were Never Really Here, with Joachim Phoenix, I think it should have won Best Director in, in the year that it was nominated. I think it was last year. And it, it's a, an absolutely magnificent piece of work. You're film. never really here, right? You're never really here. Joanna Hogg's The Souvenir, which is, Ed is actually producing the second part of that. Um, it's an, so there, there are, I, I think what has actually changed is 
I mean, what you recognize is all the voices that we have never heard because they never got to make films. I mean, like there are as many, do you just know there are as many great filmmakers who happen to be women in any era as men, but the men tended to have got the chance to do it more easily in the past. The one thing that I've noticed actually is maybe as a sort of uh, a slight tangent, but, but on set, the, the traditional, like filmmaking used to be, the departments were incredibly gendered. So camera department was 95% male. Um, you know, and I remember the, you know, and, and actually usually quite macho and quite sort of, because you came up through the ranks, it was, you know, it was tough to be a, a trainee and a loader and you get like slagged and, you know, and you had to really have develop a tough skin. And so when those guys got to be at the top and, and they're like, they're, they're the ones with all the gear and the massive budgets that, that could become sort of a little bit toxic, not for all, but sometimes I've, I've since worked with, um, I've been working with Kate, uh, Susie Lavelle for the last while, so on normal people. And it's so interesting seeing how the camera department transforms really? when it becomes more balanced really? in a really positive way. And I think the set, I think sets are more, um, they function better. They absolutely function better when there is a good gender balance. Um, I just, I don't know. There's just a different sensibility. And, and actually, subsequently, some of the male uh, directors of photography that I've worked with since are, are a new type, which I think is part of this process mm -hmm. because, because they kind of that toxic quality of camera departments is kind of gone. You have some very gentle souls That's who right. are lighting now who would have been like eaten alive <laughs> back in the it's day. Just the of, 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 of totally. Absolutely. That's great. That's absolutely lovely. Okay.